back to my YouTube channel. So this video is completely off the cuff. It is not planned at all, not that I ever plan my YouTube videos really. Um, but I just thought I would sit down and have a chat with you and talk about something really personal actually. I am a little bit nervous to talk about it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, if you've watched my YouTube videos, you'll know that I am a very open book, um, probably too open at times. And I, I really, you know, I really believe that we can all connect on a level um, in life through common experiences and shared experiences. And I really wish when I was younger that YouTube was a thing. I grew up very curious, um, lots of questions, wondering who I was, where I was from, um, what my purpose was. I've always been a very deep, intuitive, empathetic person um, and often felt really lost, you know, like never 100% knew where I fit in and never knew who I was and there was just lots of questions um, constantly for me. Um, I know I mentioned this in one of my previous YouTube videos, touched on it about obviously growing up and finding out that I am half Persian or Iranian, whichever word you want to use, I love both. And lots of you wanted to know that story. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm gonna try and make this not too long. Um, it is a very long story. There's loads of information, there's loads of detail. I'm just gonna go with it and hopefully we'll not be here 45 minutes later. <laughs> As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on this video and go back and watch all of my other videos because really it does mean the absolute world and your support is so appreciated. So growing up, um, I um, you know, was in a single um, parent family, so a lone parent family, me mum was on her own. Me mum's amazing. I love me mum. Woo! <laughs> we're not even two minutes in and we're having tears. Wow. Right, let's try and stay composed. <laughs> um, it's just because speaking about things like this is really emotive. Speaking about my family is um, just so um, emotional for me because they mean the absolute world to me, especially my mum. She's my best friend. I love her the absolute bits. I love her more than anything and anyone in the world. Yeah, it was just, I guess it was just crap um, for both for both me and me mum growing up. Me mum had me when she was 17. Um, she was so happy when she found out she was pregnant with me. She's she's always told me that. She's like, when I found out, I think she was walking over a bridge and she just wanted to scream so loud and be like, I'm so happy. Um, she had lost her mum a few years before she got pregnant with me. And I guess having me was probably like, uh, I don't know, like it probably, it would never fill a void, but it kind of gave her a purpose. Um, so we instantly just had a really close friendship and relationship. I mean, my mum's only 17 years older than me. She's not even 50 yet. Um, and she's just an amazing person. I think she was still growing up when she had me, you know, like it was difficult. There was a lot of hardship. My mum was super strict and very regimented and therefore I was very, very well behaved and, you know, there was so much that went on, um, but always in the back of my mind, I used to think, why have I not got a dad? Where's my dad? And you know, if I used to mention it to me mum, rightly so, she would be a bit dismissive or a bit angry that I had mentioned it. And at, of course, as a child, you think, oh God, have I done something wrong? And I really want to make this video because I really want, I needed this video when I was a child or when I was a teenager. And I know that there's people, young people out there who have the same situation as me and I really want to be the person or to shed light on this and let you know that I relate to how you feel and let you know that you're not on your own whether that be you've grown up in a lone parent family and both parents are the same ethnicity or from the same culture or you know from the same place but even more so when you when you've got a parent that you don't know and who is from a different culture altogether, it's a different ethnicity altogether. And that curiosity of wanting to know that parent who is absent is even greater. It really is. Like for me growing up, I used to go to school, really white school, Newcastle isn't that multicultural, especially when I was younger. And people used to say like racist remarks to me. 
not in primary school but in high school they call me I'm not going to go in to say what they said but I wasn't bullied by any stretch of the imagination but the words that used to come at me I used to think well I'm not that but even if I was that why is that a bad thing I've always questioned who I am and I've always been questioned from other people as to who I am you know I've met boyfriends or best friends or colleagues and they'd be like oh where are you from and I'm like Newcastle and like yeah but you look really foreign and I'm like um, and I never really had a solid answer and my dad lied to me mum and he said that he was Italian he lied about his name and um, so my mum couldn't give us solid answers and back then there was no Facebook there was no Instagram so my mum only had the small amount of information that she um, that she took from him and then when she got pregnant he, he, he wasn't interested in knowing that aside, I always had that curiosity. So, you know, I spoke to my mum about it over the years and never really got anywhere. It was obviously a sore subject for her, which is so understandable, but I needed to know. Having suffered from anxiety, stress, elements of depression during my teens and my twenties, I even used to have panic attacks as a child. I can remember that very vividly, but not knowing what was going on, feeling very out of control, very panicked like I was going to die, all of these things I, I do believe are a product of not knowing 100% who I am. I grew up very, very confused, um, always have an affinity towards Middle Eastern culture, always feeling like I fit in more with foreign people, always loving being around and learning about foreign people's you know kind of lifestyle and dress sense and food and, and when I say foreign I mean foreign i don't i literally do not mean a specific area in the world i literally just love meeting foreign people it's just they're so interesting to me and i love learning about people's culture but middle eastern culture really did stand out to me and when i was about six i had a best friend and her family um originated from pakistan and she was called Saira and I still speak to Saira to this day and she lived over the back of um, where we lived and her family had a shop and um, I remember I used to go in and I used to eat the, uh, the food that her mum used to prepare and then she would let me wear our lingas and all of our gorgeous um, outfits for weddings and different things like that and then after school she used to go and read the Quran and I used to be like oh can I come and read the Quran and she like, oh, Beth you can't you can't and I just always had this feeling in me like affinity towards Islam and you know moving on a few years and then we started visiting Turkey and you know not the same but got a similar vibe to Iran and I just kind of always kind of found myself dating guys who were Middle Eastern and things like that anyways um, I got to the age of I think I was 25 and I did an ancestry DNA test now I didn't think anything of it um, I literally thought it was going to come back as like something maybe like Italian I do get mistaken as being Italian quite a bit um, or maybe like I don't know like just something maybe European but I just wasn't sure so I was working at a school at the time and one of my colleagues and good friends she was around 50 had been adopted as a child and she really wanted to find her birth mother and I really Really wanted to know more about my dad and who I was so we did an ancestry DNA together and oh she's amazing she's gorgeous my, my friend Judith just such a pure soul and I remember I was taking the young people out on a trip so I was out with the young people when I got my results and I messaged Judith she was back in the office and I said I've had my results and she went so have I so she went to log on to hers but as she logged on to hers mine was signed in on her computer and she seen my results before me just like <gasps> Beth, you're half Iranian and I, she was like, I knew it, I knew it, you've got that look and I was like, what does that mean, what does that mean? Because I didn't have a massive awareness of what um, Iran was or looked like or what it meant to be Persian. If you're not aware, Iran used to be called Persia before it was overtaken. I have done some research on this but then I forget the facts so please, 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 if you're Iranian forgive me and please contact me so we can chat. But it was called Persia and then it got, um, I think, I think what happened was it was take Iran was taken over, well Persia was taken over and then it was a completely different leadership structure and then they changed the name but, but I do know it was all political and um, politics just, oh, I've tried to avoid politics but yeah, yeah so she was like you fro you're half Persian so I was like oh my god what does that mean so at that point I literally decided to go on a massive hunt 
to find out everything that there would be to find out about Iran and what it meant to be Iranian. So this is what it looks like. Whether you can see. Um, but it tells you um, where you're from. It compares your DNA against different worldwide reference panels to see which populations your DNA looks most like. So I think mine was like 40% Iranian, like 5% Turkish, 3% the Caucasus, and then 2% Italian or something like that. And then the, re the rest was basically white British um, between Ireland, Scotland, just a little bit of everything, um, which was obviously my mum's side. So I was like, wow, what the hell? But one of my friends, Rhiannon, she is my gorgeous best friend. She had a lot of friends who were Iranian. So we went down the road of finding out loads of information. She got loads of information from her friends. I did a lot of Googling. And then um, I was chatting to some people on Ancestry, trying to find out if they were linked to my father. So definitely got somewhere with that um, and was kind of to and fro in between you know like oh I might have like a bit of an in here and actually it's leading nowhere so with that knowledge it kind of gave me a lot of ease but then what I found was I was kind of obsessing over the culture because I was like I've always loved Middle East Eastern culture this makes perfect sense now um you know being in Turkey Dubai all of these places where it's got like a um a Middle Eastern influence and I kind of felt more like I related to that side of my DNA than I did my white English side. So I knew that I didn't have the clarity that I needed just from that DNA test on its own. I knew that I was going to need to find my dad and I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I got to the age of around, was it 28? I think I was 28, nearly 29. And I said to my mum, look, I had had like several rounds of CBT therapy. Um, I was having, you know, moments where I was great and then moments where I just didn't feel complete and the only way that I can really 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 explain it for people who have been fortunate enough to grow up with two parents and um, their birth parents is um, it feels like there's just a little puzzle piece and it's just missing and it just feels like it doesn't matter what you do how happy you are how much success you have how much love you have in your life you just know that that little piece just isn't there and that doesn't take away from any of your family that you already have or any of your friends or any of the support network that you have in your life. It doesn't take that away. That is beautiful enough, amazing. But the curiosity that comes with not knowing who you are and not knowing who is your other parent was just too great for me. It was too great for me and I thought I need to find this guy. And when I was younger, when I was like 15, 16, 21, I tried to reach out with the same information that I had at this point and I could never find him. So the information that I had, and I said, I went to me mum, I said, look mum, I said, please can you support me um, in finding my dad? Um, I need to, I'm not gonna be able to rest. My mental health is never gonna be sound until I meet him until I know who he is because I didn't know his name I didn't know what he looked like I didn't know 100% you know like what his background was I just knew nothing I knew nothing um, and the curiosity was just too great I am a curious person an inquisitive person I am just the kind of person who needs to know the far end of the fart <laughs> so being me I, I did I just needed to know and my fear was that he might die and I'd never find him and that was too much for me to bear so, so my mum said, okay, Beth, I'll give you all the information I have, which I've already given you. But at this point, it felt different. I felt like it was her blessing. I felt like she was understanding that I needed to find him, not because I didn't love her or she wasn't enough, because that was never the case. She's always been more than enough. The best mum that I could ever have asked for. But I think she realised that I just needed to know just for myself, just to tick a box just to get rid of that question mark so with that being said she gave me the information we had this information so we had i think it was four pieces of information so we knew his birthday but we didn't know the year and his birthday is actually the same day as mine you couldn't write it we knew where he worked so the two places that he worked part-time when me man met him and he was at uni so we knew what uni he was at too he also knew his student address so with those four pieces of information we went ahead and we went to look for him so we went to firstly um to the house that he used to live in 
didn't get anywhere with that because of course he lived there in 1989 new owners land registry doesn't go back that far unless you ring up so we tried to kind of get that information couldn't get it immediately so we strike that one off we then went to um, the takeaway which was the takeaway that he definitely worked at them for the most time that my mum was with him and they were together for about I think four months ish and he was there all the time so we went the guy was like I will get you in touch with the owner I said amazing he said it's the same owner as it was back then and I was like oh my god this is it we're in my mom was very adamant we're gonna find him through this because the father of his best friend is the owner of this takeaway and this guy is saying the owner is still the same so it's got to be the case we've got to find him so in between that we went to the um library we had a look at the electoral roll just in case that he voted didn't find anything in the meantime um the owner rang me um, a very old charming iranian guy and he said i'm not sure i can't remember this name i said it is a it's a nickname he said but i'm gonna ask my son and his son was my dad's best friend and my mum was aware of that because they all used to go out so the son of the takeaway owner was um telling his father that he didn't know who he was <laughs> didn't know who i was going on about so we were getting nowhere so i was like right okay getting quite frustrated because you know when you're this close you're like this close this close and somebody's like sorry no can't help you and you're like cool I just couldn't have it I just couldn't have it this same takeaway I'd been to after nights out it literally was over the bridge from where I worked so this must have been midweek when this guy rung me and said listen my son doesn't know anything neither do I I'm really sorry so I went back to the takeaway and I met the guy and I said it was just coincidental that he was there at the time and I, I hopped out and I said hi I just want to introduce myself and he was like oh my god amazing to meet you so kind so lovely and he said I will ask my son again but you know I can't force information out of him I said that's fine so I kind of left it I left it a few days I think a week it was nearly I think five days had passed and I was at work and I was very antsy and very agitated and I thought you know it's a Friday afternoon I was leaving work I knew I was going to pass the takeaway pretty much on the way back so I just popped in and I spoke to the same guy I spoke to initially and I said please if you have any information I won't bring your name into it I don't want anything from my dad I just want to know who he is please you're you're my last hope and he was like, I'm sorry, I have heard of this nickname, so I know that this guy exists, but I don't know him. And if the owner and his son are saying that they don't know him too, there's nothing, we can't help you. And I can remember getting in the car and I, and I cried and I sat there and I thought, is this it? Is this it? And... The person that I am, I literally don't give up. I just don't give up. So an idea popped into my head, the other takeaway. So the other takeaway was in Gateshead. We're in Newcastle at the minute. The other takeaway was in Gateshead. Friday night, on my own, I thought, I'm going. What have I got to lose? So I got there, typed in the name. It was still the same name. Got there, walked at the takeaway. Well, firstly, I asked, could I speak to the manager? He said, yes. The manager came out and I said, please, can you tell me if you know this person? And he looked at me and he said, yes, I do. Now, in that moment, I literally felt like all my Christmases had come at once. I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I felt light. I felt, I felt amazing. I just felt like a burden had been taken from me in that moment. And he gave me his name just his first name and he said please have a look on Facebook you'll be able to find him he used to part on this he sold his half to me um eight years ago I'll see if I can get in touch with him so I was like right so I got in the car rang me mom I was like mom this is the name she's like yes that's it because obviously it's a foreign name so it's maybe not a name that you would remember but she remembered his nickname because that's the name that he liked to go by so she's like, it's him, it's him. So we searched and we searched and we searched and we searched. There were so many of this person on Facebook. I thought, I'm going to have to go back. I felt 
guilty because I didn't want to pester so I waited a few days I had left my number with this very helpful guy and he didn't get back to me so on the Sunday I thought I'm gonna go it's been two days and I went in and I said hi it's just me again I've had a look I would love it if you could give me the surname please and the chef come out of the back of the kitchen and he said please excuse me for listening in but I've been I heard your story on Friday and I'm hearing it again today and nobody deserves to not know who their father is here's his full name and here's a picture of him and showed me a picture of my dad on his phone there and then I literally couldn't believe it I can't explain to you how out of reach that felt just knowing a name and seeing a face and I just felt I, I, there's no other feeling like it I, I've not had a feeling like it since or before that and I just that was enough that on its own was enough for me I got so much from that clarity closure assurance of who I am and some people might think, well, you know who you are, Beth, and why do you need your dad? Because your mum's been amazing, you've got family who love you, but it's the curiosity, it's the not knowing, it's the wondering. And I really believe, unless you've been through this, it's probably, it's probably hard to relate, because I find it hard to relate to people who have both parents, and I guess it's a unique experience you know, to grow up with just one parent. I studied sociology at uni, I know the impact of the family dynamics and how that can really shape you as a person. So anyways, I was so thankful to this guy and I said, please, can you let him know that I'm looking for him? I don't want to go all guns blazing. I don't want to plunge in. I want him to know that I'm sincere. I don't want anything from him. Um, and the guys give me lots of information of he's a very successful businessman, he's got two daughters, um, he's this, he's that, give me so much information, very, very interesting because a lot of the things that he is and he does and he has are very similar to me and it's interesting to think that like the whole nature versus nurture thing is a thing, like there's some things that are just built into me which are very clearly from my dad's side and very very clearly Iranian and very very clearly not from my mom's side and I've had nothing to do with my dad, my dad hasn't brought me up in the slightest, hasn't had any impact on my life positively, <laughs> I mean he's definitely had a negative impact on it let's be honest but um yeah, so um, he didn't reach out. I think I, I think I gave him about two weeks and I reached out to him and we met and I was very, very um, honest and I said, at the end of the day, I, all I want to know is you. I'd love to get to know my culture. I'd love to get to know my sisters. And I just really want us to, to be able to kind of get to know each other. And I didn't expect to be kind of invited around for Sunday dinner every week and stuff like that. And I was very patient. I think I spent about two years getting to know him. He didn't want to tell his family in case his wife was upset um, and so it was you know it was difficult but I was always very understanding and patient just always very grateful that I had eventually found out the information that I really longed for I mean I guess his wife doesn't accept me um, if I'm being honest and that's a shame because I've not met her and I would have loved to but the main thing for me is that I now know who I am and I have lots of gorgeous Iranian friends who are so kind and who are so willing to share our culture with me and another random thing that I did was watch Shars of Sunset um, during lockdown because I realised it's about Persian people and it gave me so much insight I mean I guess exaggerated insight but so much insight into my culture which I've missed out on for so many years I guess I could keep going on and on and on and give you so many of the details but I really don't want this video to be so so long. I really would love for you to comment below or message me on Instagram even if you don't want to comment publicly um, and let me know if you have had a similar situation or if you're Iranian and you want to say hi, you want to share your amazing beautiful culture with me which is also my culture, I've just had the misfortune of missing out on it um, but I really just wanted to share this because a lot of you wanted to know how I found out I was Iranian and now I love the culture and I'm like so proud because it's the most beautiful culture with the most beautiful, kind, generous people in 
now I know where I get a lot of my trades from. It's just in you. It's just in you, I think. And I know, like, Iran gets a lot of bad press and stuff, but the country is gorgeous. And I really, really, truly would love to visit. Yeah, I just really wanted to share this story. I really hope that if you're in the same boat as me, if you have, um, you know, grown up in a lone parent family, um, especially if your absent parent is from a different culture, that this gives you a little bit of... I don't know like just assurance that you're not alone and message me if that is you and, and you just want to chat because I think when I was younger I would have loved to have just spoken to somebody who knows how it feels um because I think in life all we want really is to be understood and to be heard and to be listened to I guess it's a lonely place to be somewhere where everyone else around you has never been yeah any questions you know that you can feel free to comment below and ask me um i just want to say thank you so much for listening if you got to the end you are an absolute superstar and yeah like subscribe comment and just spread the love thank you so much for watching bye guys